If you truly want to be successful, do those right actions consistently over time. Join me on my mission to create a new tomorrow as I chat with industry experts, elite athletes, thought leaders, and government officials about how we activate our vision for a better world. We may agree and we may disagree, but I'm not backing down. I'm Ari Gronich, and this is Create a New Tomorrow Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Create a New Tomorrow. I am your host, Ari Gronich, and today I have with me another one of the Achieve Alpha Leaders. Achieve Systems is an organization that I've been part of about 14 years, and uh, today I have with me J.B. Braden. He is an inspirational speaker, trainer, and speaker coach. He actually, for Achieve, does the speaker trainings, helps people get on stages, get their voices out there in the world. JB, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about your background, but uh, let's let's just kind of go through a little bit. You're a certified life coach or certified business coach, really, is (laughs) life, business, same thing. Uh, You work with entrepreneurs, corporate teams, business leaders, um, and teaching them how to develop superior presentation skills. And so, JB, welcome to the show. Let's let's tell the audience a little bit about your background, because I know you didn't kind of start out the same place that you've ended up and right. um, and then we'll get into like why achieve why why you why achieve and uh and some of that stuff so take it away sure man uh, yeah. thank you for having me on it's always a pleasure uh to connect with you and uh and see you so thank you for that uh but a little bit about me as you said i'm a uh, certified coach uh certified and i uh, specialize in working with uh leaders executive success teams. Um, My goal is to create success in people's lives, create success in my life, and to teach people how to create success uh, in their lives um, and to do it in a sustainable way. So I work with leadership teams, work with entrepreneurs, uh, because I'm also a speaker coach, as you mentioned. Um, And I've been speaking for well over 20 years. um, And I've been coaching speakers half that time. And so uh, when I met Robert a few years, about four years ago, we uh, created the uh, Speak with a Purpose workshop uh, that I uh, that I that I use to uh, help people put together training uh, for a speaking for their marketing tool for their business, as well as a uh, signature presentation. So I do a lot of that, but uh, you know that's that's a little bit about what I love to do and what I'm called to do. Uh, a little bit about me. I was born. I was born and raised in Alabama, but I live in Colorado now. Um, and I was raised by a single mom. And she, one of the things that she uh, taught me growing up was, uh, is she taught me a couple of things. One of the things that she taught me, Ari, was, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. And uh, that, that, those words helped shape my life. And it helped me find my, my calling and my gift. And my gift and calling is to uh, speak into other people's lives and empower them. And so that's what I do. So <laughs> I, I, I like that. Um, here, here's my, my thing, right? We always say that this golden rule of treat other people the way you want to be treated. But here's the thing. And as a healer, you, you notice this. As somebody who's in business, you hear all the self-talk as a business coach and a life coach. People don't treat themselves very well. No, they don't. Right? Yeah. I don't want to be treated the way I treat myself. <laughs> the way, right. you know, I want to be treated the way I treat others, right? Mm-hmm. So I think the golden rule needs a little shifting, but I do like the premise of the golden rule, which is that we want to treat people like our kin. Like, but then I go, okay, but kin, you know, family, we don't treat our families very well. Yeah, well, it's so interesting you say that, Art, because I've actually, you know, that was the basis for uh, a lot of things that I do, and I actually took that, that what people call the golden rule, and elevated it, you know, so it's not just treat people the way you want to be treated, but treat people the way they want to be treated, you know, yeah. um, and, and, it, and it really comes down to this, you know, my mom's, you know, treat people with respect, you know, uh, and respect is earned. But she also, another thing that she taught me was people are people. You know, it doesn't matter what color we are, how tall or short we are, how much money we have or we don't have. 
you know, we're all people uh, and we all deserve to be treated with respect. And, uh, and, you know, that's how I live my life. And, you know, by doing that, you know, I treat people, I take that, like I said, the one step further to treat people the way they want to be treated. And the only way you can treat people the way they want to be treated is you, you, you have to do something. You have to spend time to get to know them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was one of the key things is you, we're all individuals, you know? And so get to know a person for who they are. And I remember being in high school, man, and, you know, uh, people would go around, they'd, they'd say stuff about people and say this and say that. And I was always debunking. I'm like, look, man, I don't know that person. So I'm not going to sit here and, and chat with you anything about that person. But I would go out of my way to get to know a person for myself, you yeah. know? And that's the challenge that I have for a lot of people. Get to know people for, for who they are. Make your own damn opinion. And then, <laughs> you know, and then you know how to treat those people, treat them the way they want to be treated. It's, uh, it's interesting. We definitely, and this goes back to business as well as, as life in general and relationships in general is, is the assumptions that we make on right. who a person is or who a person is based on the stories that we've heard of them. And I don't know about you, I, I've met a lot of people in, in my life that other people might say uh, that person is this or that person is that or this person has this stereotype or, or because of their, you know, color. I mean, I had roommates that are, were Palestinian Muslims. That was like my sister, you know, like my family. Right. Um, and, uh, and I was all, you know, you can't, can't be friends with those people. Uh, uh, right. You know, it doesn't matter what people they are. Right. Right. Can't be friends with those people. I was the guy when I was growing up that parents said, you can't be friends with him. He's a oh, bad wow. influence. Right. So I never, mm -hmm. ever wanted to do that to another human being. Right. Right. So I agree with you, like getting to know somebody. But, you know, it's funny. My, my buddy, AJ Ali, is, is a documentary film producer and uh he's actually robert robert knows him and uh he wrote a movie he did a movie called walking while black love yeah. is the answer it's a fantastic documentary he's uh he's been showing it to police and uh homeland security all over the country uh to deal with the the black and police black and blue issues you know really it's the right. black and blue um right. and uh and Love is the answer is an acronym. And the first letter is the L, right? And what does that L stand for is learn about your neighbors. Yes. Learn right. about who it is that is next door to you. Learn about the people that you live near. Go and introduce yourself. There used to be a time in this country when you moved into a neighborhood and you had five neighbors bringing you brownie right. and things and welcoming you to the neighborhood. We don't do that kind of thing anymore, but right. God, what a, what a benefit it would be if we kept doing that, if we chose to learn about our neighbors and our people. Yeah. yeah I think that's the, I think that's the one key that's missing. You know, uh, part of my background in speaking is I spoke, I've spoken in a lot of high schools, right. And one of the programs that I spoke for, uh, that I, that I do still do some speaking for, but I did a lot of speaking for in the past is a, uh, an organization called Rachel's Challenge, right? And Rachel, Rachel Scott was the first person killed in the Columbine tragedy. And uh, after she died, her father, um, they, her family discovered that she had a goal to, mm -hmm. to, to start a chain reaction of kindness. And so he created this program to take into schools, to challenge the students, to challenge the, uh, the uh, faculty, to start a chain reaction of kindness, okay? Where you treat people with kindness, where you, you stop the excluding people. And so I say the reason I bring that up is because it kind of stems to what you just said, getting to know people. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times, like right now, the day well, we're we're in a we're in a big world of social media right now, right? And so turn the phone off vibrate but we're in a big social media and so you know a lot of people they they're they're all about how many friends do i have on facebook but i've always said this and i used to say this to the students that i would speak to social media is is, is great but it doesn't replace 
social interaction, okay? True social interaction. And here's what I believe. Some people may disagree with this, but when you remember, you and I are about the same age. And so when we're in school, when we were in school, when we had a beef with someone, we would go to them and we would talk it out, okay? And sometimes we would come to blows, but then we would hug and we would make up, right? Usually, usually the people <laughs> who got in the biggest fights became the best of friends af right afterwards. And right. That was because not only did they confront the issue directly instead of yes. withholding it and bottling it up and right. all that, but, you know, it was like when you go toe to toe with somebody, <laughs> you gain a level of respect regardless of outcome. Yeah, that's level. correct. And sometimes it works out where you become closer. Sometimes you don't. But the bottom line is you've dealt with that issue as opposed to, as you said, letting it fester, okay? And then you had those, so what happens now is people hide behind social media, okay? And they think that's their connection to people. And what has happened in our society is there's a loss of how people should, people don't know how to really build true connection. Connection that lasts a lifetime, connection that changes, uh, you know, changes people, changes generation, connection that when you're going through something so hard and so terrible, because we're disconnected these days, it's easier for somebody to pick up a gun and go blast a bunch of people that they don't know. But when right. you have, I feel like when you have a true connection with people, when you have that connection, it can help eliminate that. Because now you got some people that you can rely on. Because this world is hard, man, which is why I'm called to do what I do, to be able to help empower people and inspire people and pick people up and let people know that you don't have to do life by yourself. Yeah, when you know, you're it's struggling. You got people around you that can help you. It's funny. Um, they did a, uh, a documentary. I think it was Michael J. Fox who did this documentary called Happy. And yeah. they, uh, they were studying what made people happy throughout the, the world. And they found that the happiest place on earth was this town in Tibet in the Himalayas. And um, they actually don't measure gross domestic product, GDP. They don't measure that. They measure right. gross national happiness, GNH, how yeah. happy their society is as a whole. And that's a measurement that they actually use in order to determine if their society is being successful or not. Right. And they found that, that these societies, this one, especially the biggest difference, and this is, happens in all the blue zones as well. The, the centurion places where they're living over a hundred years old is that the biggest similarity is not diet. It's not anything other than connection with other human beings. Right. They are a family. They are a community to the true sense of the word. They take care of each other. They don't let somebody fester in depression. If somebody yeah. is depressed, they surround them. They, right. they don't try to fix them, by the way. That's the other thing that they do not That's do. Very good point. They very do not point. try to fix them. They just surround them and let them know that they are the support at any point, right? They are, right. They are the, 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 they're the wall. They're the rock. And yeah. And that's the biggest thing that I think we're missing in this world, because as you said, everybody's on social media, but there's such an anonymity to saying fuck you to somebody on text versus saying it to their face. There's such exactly. an anonymity to destructive behavior that you would never do in person. Right. right. Yeah, that you can do because why uh, there's there's a text box and a screen between yeah. them. I think social media gives people a, a false sense of confidence. They'll say things they'll say things on social media. They wouldn't dare say in other people in front of people's face. You know, um, I call it keyboard bullying is what I call it. OK, mm -hmm. and because you, you I mean, I can remember being in high school. If we had something to say to somebody, we'd say it to their face or we wouldn't say it, you know. Um, and then we'd hash it out. But people now, man, they just a bunch of we, we got a bunch of keyboard bullies out there. They 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 have a false sense of security and false sense of confidence that I'll say what I want to say, but they won't say it in front of your face. 
if you were sitting face to face to them, they wouldn't dare say it because they don't have the balls to say it, you know? And so, nor because it's just different when you have a human connection. We have such a disconnect in our world now. And a lot of that is because people think they are friends on social media. And that's not, that's not the, uh, the, the, we've lost the sight of what a true friend is and what so, that looks like. So let's kind of take this back to a, a slightly different, uh, different angle. And okay. that angle is going to be in all of this noise and all of this social media noise and all of the things that we have to experience millions and millions and billions and billions and trillions of bits of data more than our primal history even 40 years ago is able to comprehend. I mean, the, the amount of technology has increased so drastically that we're in literally adrenal shock right. <laughs> on a 100% daily basis just in the amount of things that our body and our senses are taking in. So in all of this noise, in all of this stuff, right, we're going to go to that signature presentation. How does somebody step out of that noise and become heard, become seen? Because to me, I have this saying, a, a bully's best friend is silence. Silence is a bully's best friend. Right. How does one break out of the noise so that they get heard when they are talking? Because what you've said is true, that people are holding back and not speaking, at least not in person. But the other part is that when they are speaking, they're not being heard. They're not being listened to. They're not being seen. And so in business and in life, right, we all need that be seen. And you do this signature presentation Mm -hmm. which I believe is one of the ways, but why don't you talk about this a little bit? How does somebody step out of the noise? That's a very good question. Um, and when I, when, I, when I teach and talk about the signature presentation, there's two key components that, that we, we look at and uh, we make sure that uh, no matter which clients we're working with, there's two key questions that we ask them are, and one of them is who's your target audience, Okay. Uh, and so, first of all, you got to be clear on who your target audience is. You find the right target audience, you're going to be heard. Okay. Um, and so that's the first thing. And then, the, and then the second question that we always ask is, what's the problem that you solve for your target audience? Right. That's very important because if you don't understand the problem you solve, then you can't communicate that problem to your target audience. But you want to talk about being heard. When you get in front of the right audience with the right message, you know, delivering it and communicating the problem that you can solve their problem, whatever the problem or problems may be, then you'll be heard. OK, right. uh, and so that's that's how you can find your voice. That's how you can be heard by speaking to your the right audience and communicating to them that you can solve their problem. Does that make sense? The, 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 I guess the question becomes, because I, you know, I've, I feel like, like, let's say I've been in this industry 27 years, right? And mm -hmm. there's been times when I've had a really fantastic booming career with athletes and actors and A-list celebrities and people who, you know, that was my target market back then. I was living in Los Angeles. That was, those were the people that I was looking for. Right. And right. then, um, and then nine 11 happened and all the studios shut down. Right. Right. And so I didn't really know who my target market was. And so nothing that I was saying was getting out to the world. So I'm right. kind of, I'm kind of playing this, this scenario so that the audience maybe can get an idea of how it plays out. Once I figured out, okay, my target audience now is got to be just the athletes. I'm no longer going to be doing studio work because the studios are shut down. So where do I go? Right. And so back then there wasn't really internet, you know, it was web TVs and, and maybe a little AOL and prodigy with some chat rooms. 
Uh, but uh, taking us back, you're taking us back. You're taking us back. I'm, back. I'm, taking I'm us back, dating Art. myself. I'm dating myself. You know, I remember my 486 SX computer that was this big, <laughs> right? Right. And, uh, right. So I, I'm here, and, and I'm going. Okay, so what do I do to to get the, these people? So my target audience was high end athletes, Olympic guys, right? So what did I do? I was living near Muscle Beach. Mm-hmm. And so I'd go down to Venice to Muscle Beach to Gold's Gym, and I I could pick two or three athletes out of that place at will because I knew my business and I was going to where my target was, right? Yeah. So I got heard. And then I I went, you know, there was another crisis, right? And, (laughs) And so I didn't know who my target audience was. And then and then the 2008, and I had, at that point, I had just bought a house. It was a million dollar house in LA, right? And I'm like, now my house is worth 600,000. Oh, <laughs> and wow. all yeah. of my clients yeah. who were high-end at the time, business profile people lost their hedge funds, lost their houses, lost their shirts. Right. And all of a sudden you got to pick up and who's my target audience now? So this is not, what I, I guess what I'm getting at is one, the stories that might help pe- the audience get to a place where they, oh, okay, I could reassess my audience, but also letting them know, yes, you can, this is a living thing. Right. Right. This yeah, isn't no, static. Yeah. And so people, yeah. um, the biggest, I think, thing I hear when, when I hear people talking to you and you tell them to niche down uh, is, but I serve everybody. And I've heard that before. And if you serve, if you serve everybody, then you wouldn't be struggling for clients. There's no such thing. You know, uh, one of the things that T. Harv Eker says in his uh, his uh, millionaire marketing course is you the the people that you you the people that you your your ideal clients are clients who are willing to work with you. Okay, your ideal clients are not everyone, and you don't. And quite frankly, when you think about it, Ari, you don't want to work with everyone. Okay, and think about you think about Nike. You think about some of the big companies out there. Okay, um, they don't target everyone, but they know who their target market is. They know who their demographics is, and that's who they target. Now, do, the, does people outside of their target market purchase their things? Absolutely, but that's not who they go after, and and that'll happen. And so the people that say that, you know, I, I, I target everybody. Um, that's where you're missing out because you, 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 when you target everybody, then you're targeting no one, okay? Right. Because no, we, we all don't have the same problems, all right? And so how can you get clear on the problem you solve when you assume that everybody in the world has that problem that you solve? That's not the case. And so the two go hand in hand, if you think about it. It's not just the target audience, but it's also the problem that you solve for that target audience. They both go hand in hand. And when you understand that and you understand both of them together, then you understand you don't solve, you, you don't, your target audience is not everyone. Right. So as you know, I, I'm a solutions guy. And every time I talk to you, one of the, th- the fun things that, uh, that I have is that you're a solutions guy too. You're not you're like, I don't want to talk about the problem. Let's get to the solution. Let's get to where we can fix this. Let's get to the, you know, the meat. And so I, I have this new saying that I came up with recently. And it's, I want to stop gathering to complain and start collaborating to succeed. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. That's what yeah. we want to do in life. We want to stop gathering to complain and start collaborating to succeed. And one of the things that Achieve Systems does is collaboration at a scale um, hardly ever seen in the industry, right? So we bring together health professionals, fitness professionals, nutrition, I mean, speaking coach, visibility, marketing, all these things we collaborate, right? So what is the, the one thing that you found as a benefit to collaboration versus competition and why Achieve Systems kind of excels in that arena? The biggest benefit is perspective and experience from others 
and support. Think about this. Most entrepreneurs, they feel like they're out there by themselves, all alone, okay? And being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, it's, it's, it's like a roller coaster ride, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. And so when you have a community where you can collaborate with people, on those times where you're stuck, where you're dealing with fear, where you're dealing with limiting beliefs, when you have, when you, I, I, one of the things that what I call it is surrounding yourself with ass kickers, right? Okay. Yeah. So when you have that, when you surround yourself with those ass kickers, those people that you collaborate with and you're going through those tough times, it's easier to pull yourself out of it because you got you, because you have their strength as well as your strength working together, which is how it's meant to be. You know, so for me, the biggest thing about Achieve is having that community of people that will not let you let yourself down. It's not allowed that you let yourself down, you know. If it is, then you find yourself going a different direction because as long as you're in lockstep with uh, the people that Achieve, then you will, be, you will succeed because that's what we, we want you to succeed. And so that collaboration is like, it's like that force of energy moving forward. And yeah. that's, the bit, that's the most important thing. To add to that, yeah. it's not just the support because, you know, there's a lot of mastermind groups and there's a lot of, yeah. of you know, inner circles and, and support groups, right? Yeah. And I, I don't really like to think of, um, of Achieve as a support group for business owners, right? I right. think of it as a place where you can get the support, yes. You could get the actual help, not, a, not just the advice, not just the support, not just the advice, not just the help, but you can right. actually find partners and people to collaborate with directly to build other retreats and build products yes. with and build yeah. other things with. I mean, I've had the, the honor of, of writing the foreword for two people's uh, uh, or two books uh, writing a chapter in another book for Achieve members, right? That's a, a, a area where I'm supporting them, but also collaborating and, and partnering with them. So where's some of the places I know you have, uh, where's some of the places that you've collaborated to make a successful exit, so to speak, with, with um, an Achieve member? Oh, yeah, no, those are good questions. Um we have, uh, whether it be uh, working with a, a group with a mastermind, um, that's always good. One of the things that I love is that that's a good collaboration is I, I'm part of the uh, Achieve Leads group, okay? And I actually call it Achieve Mastermind group, but we work together helping each other uh, cultivate and find leads. Um, and, and so when you collab, that collaboration uh, is like you said, it's not just about the support. But it's also, I, what I've learned from it is the different approaches, the different perspectives that people take, you know? But also, you meet people that you would never have never met. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about it. When you collaborate, you can introduce to, let's just say if you and I, with some of the people that I've collaborated with in, in Achieve, I've had the opportunity to get to know people in their network and they've had opportunity to get to know people in our in my network. So collaboration, when you collaborate with other people, then you have the opportunity to also connect other people to connect, collaborate. That's what I've found. So it's like kind of building on it. And so being a, being a part of Achieve's uh, Leads Group, I've been able to do that and have that collaboration with other people and then connect them with other people. But, you know, a lot of times we'll be sitting around and say, hey, do you know, do you know anybody, um, a good CPA, or do you know anybody that does this or does that, whatever the case may be, say, yeah, man, I know a couple of people, let me introduce you. Um, and there you go. And so that's why that collaboration is so powerful. So I don't want to leave out competition, because I, yeah. I do tend to, to, you know, put competition on a little bit further down the, the totem pole for collaboration. I don't want to completely destroy competition, although I do a little bit, but why don't you tell me what in your mind healthy competition looks like in business? Uh, in business. In business. Um, that's interesting. 
Uh, first of all, when it comes to competition, I think about this. First thing I think about is um, being very good at what you do. When you're very good at what you do, and you spend time making sure that you continue to be good at what you do, then, you, then being afraid of competition it, it, is, it isn't a, a thing for me, okay? Uh, it's more of how can I dominate my sector, okay? my sector and what I mean by that is when people when people think about speaking and speaker coaching I want them to think about me okay and so and so that's my goal so it's not so much about having competition here's what having competition does it keeps you sharp it keeps you um honest uh it keeps you um striving to be better because think about this, if you don't have competition, would you, wouldn't you say that if you don't have competition, you may become complacent? Yeah. So that's, that all depends. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it a different step with you, a different way, because okay. competition with anybody else. I don't believe that I've ever been in competition with another massage therapist, sports therapist, right. Of any yeah. company, right? Right. But I am in competition with yesterday's version of me. Right. That is who I'm in competition with every single day. Absolutely. Some days I win that competition and some days I lose it. I'll okay. be honest, right? Yeah. I'm not in a competition with anybody else for any other reason or comparison and, and anymore. You know, I used to. It's like, oh, somebody's skinnier than me, got bigger muscles than me, got, you know, yeah. higher IQ than me, got whatever, you know, whatever it is, right? got a better, more degrees than me. I don't have any yeah. degrees, you know, like everybody's got degrees. No, I'm not in competition with anybody no any else anymore. I'm in competition Absolutely. with yesterday's version of me every single day. And I find that the more I look at perspective that way, yeah, I could go up to somebody who I might have thought was competition in the past yeah, and say, Hey, I saw that you guys opened a gym right next door to my gym. What do you yeah. do differently than I do? I could send some people your way. Yeah. And we could create collaboration between the two gyms, between the two personal trainers, between the two therapists, between the two hypnotherapists, all that. You know, it's like we could create partnerships and collaboration with the people who are better than us at certain things and not be in competition with them specifically. Right. Be in competition with the previous version of ourselves. And I love how you put that. And I love how you put that. Yeah. Thank you. And that's something I think Achieve Systems is really designed to help people with is not be in competition with others in our field, but be right. in competition with our previous version of ourselves, with the person who thought, I can't do business. I'm too spiritual. I can't accept money for this. Or Whatever the block, whatever the thing is that's stopping somebody from being that better part of themselves. I think that's yeah, something. I love that. I love that, all right, because I've never, I, I, and when you think about it, I've never looked at myself. I've never looked at other speakers and speaker coaches as my competition. I never have. And so I love how you put that, that I'm in competition with uh, myself, being a better version of myself. And how do you do that? You look at the people in your field, what they're doing, and my, my, uh, my approach is this, what are they doing that I can incorporate to make me better? Is there anything they're doing that I can make me better? That's how I always look at it. I have a lot of speaker friends around the country and that's one of the, that's one of the things that we've been able to help each other get better because I can look at something that they may do on stage and say, ooh, I like that, I'm gonna try that or I'm gonna try this version of that you know, that sort of thing. That's how you get better. And so I love that you said that because I, I, I've i never looked at people in my field, other coaches, as my competition. I looked at, I look at them as my allies, okay? How can we learn from each other, make each other better at what we do? And like you said, that's what's great about Achieve, okay? Because that's, that's, that's one of the things that we, we love to help people do. It's not about you being in competition, but it's how can you take what I'm doing 
incorporated into your business if we're in the same business and make you better and vice versa. I love that. That goes to the same thing with life, right? Yeah. Like if, if um, you know, I'm divorced now, right? But every minute since the time that I got separated, my beyond the trauma, right, of, of the experience, mm -hmm. my thoughts have been, how can I be a better man? How can I yeah. be in better relationship? How can I take ownership of every bit of my responsibility in this debacle that has occurred? You know, how can, right. how can I be a better man in a better relationships with people? And I spent, and I'm a, I, I talk about this a lot, but I spent about 300 plus hours inside of a mirror naked staring at myself, crying, wailing, screaming, yeah, stunned and shocked. I mean, in, in any emotional state you can imagine until I worked that out of myself, until I was a better version of me, until I had stripped, I call it stripping the layers of masks of trauma. Yeah. Oh. Stripping the, the layers of masks because we, we have this inauthenticity from trauma that stops us from being the best we can be. And I'm going to relate this back to you because the biggest fear is not fear of snakes. It's not fear of flying. It's not fear of, uh, of falling. It's fear of speaking. Yeah. Public speaking. Yeah. Yeah, the, you've heard it said, and uh, that's, a, that's a huge fear for a lot of people, uh, fear of speaking, and uh, it's a real thing, and some of my clients have had it, and, you know, we, we work through it and, and uh, allow them to get to the crux of what that fear really is, you know, um, and then once they get to the crux of what it really is, they can move past it, and so we do a lot of work around that. It is a big fear for a lot of people. A lot of and a lot of fear around it is uh, un, unsubstantiated, uh, and it's just it stems from a limiting belief, or or uh, or another fear. You know, some of them, uh, some I've heard people say all the time, "Well, I'm, I'm afraid of messing up." Okay, well, how can you eliminate that fear? And then that's they up a lot. really work on it. Yeah, that's up a lot. That's yeah, how you eliminate but, the fear. Okay, I messed up. <laughs> yeah, and, and then here's the thing. You, you know, and, and basically because that was one of my fears plus 20 plus years ago. Uh, and then I was like, well, how can I eliminate that? Well, prepare to the best of my ability. OK. And that's all you can do. Right. Just a question. Yeah. Do you still get the butterflies when you go up on stage? I do, but it's not from fear. Now it's excitement. And see, people people think they feel that and they think. Because if you think about it, fear and excitement can feel the same. It's, it's the exact, same energy. It's the exact, yeah. exact same chemistry. Yeah, it is, right? And so people ask me all the time, I said, do you, get, do you get afraid? I said, no, now I just feel excited. You know, so it's a different feeling um, that I've channeled because I've done it so much now and I know how to prepare. I prepare myself to the point where that fear, that fear of uh, messing up has no power okay is it still there yeah but it has no power because i've taken the power away from that now it's just a it's just an excitement of being able to share my message with a group of people funny i i've been speaking 27 years my grandmother was 40 years uh head toastmistress uh in san diego was a speaker my mom is a teacher my brother is a teacher. My dad was a master debater, you know, in the debate clubs and stuff. So being on stage and I grew up in Hollywood. So I mean, acting and, and, and commercials and stuff like that all my life. And what I, what I find to be fascinating is how much I hate being on video, <laughs> how much I dislike the look of myself on camera still, 
how much I dislike looking at the pictures of me on stage or you know, uh-huh. the video of me on stage. And then, and then I look at the pictures of the audience while I'm on stage, right? Afterwards, or I look at, I, I look at the response that I get. Right. It makes all of that dislike of not wanting to be seen, not wanting to be heard, not wanting to be acknowledged because every time growing up I did, it was, it was some kind of trauma, you know, right. some kind of drama happened if I got seen, whether it was, you know, physical abuse, sexual abuse, didn't matter, mental abuse. It was, if I got seen, there was trauma. And so I didn't want to be seen. So, you know, what's funny is the only way to cure the somatic trauma of not wanting to be seen is to be seen a lot and to be right. seen in a place that's safe and to right. be clean, you know. So part of what I love about Achieve and what I love about what you do with Achieve, especially in, in the speaker sector, is that you provide and we provide a safe place to have different somatic experiences so that you can get seen often and have it be such a safe container that you can become comfortable being seen, yes. right? You can right. release those traumas that are embedded in the soma, in the tissues, in the memory, right? because we create that safe place. So talk a little bit about why that safe place is so important, especially for seekers and especially for people who have that trauma of not being worth and not being seen and, you know, not being valuable. Because... I know you and I feel pretty much the same that everybody has some amazing value to offer others. Right. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting them to be willing to share. Right. Right. Um, Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And so for people who, uh, what you said about the safe place is so important. Um, And how do you create that safe place? You make you let people know it's okay. It's okay to make a mistake. Um, you're not going to be judged. Um, this doesn't define who you are. Um, and so, creating that gives people permission. And a lot of times, that's what we need. We just need permission to try, and that it's okay if we don't. If it doesn't turn out the way we think it's going to, because most of the time it doesn't. And so we spent, I spent a lot of time helping change people's perspective on fear of failure, so to speak, okay? Because it's not about failing, it's about learning the lesson from what you've just done. You know, learning the lesson that you need to learn and that you're supposed to learn. And so uh, creating that safe place for people to do that. Um, it it kind of goes back to, think about this, kind of goes back to when we were all um, toddlers starting to walk. Okay, our parents created a safe space for us to continue to fall as we went through that, right? And so it's the same thing here. We, we create a safe place for people to learn to walk in business, so to speak, right? right. With, a, with a permission to, it's okay that you're going to fail at this or you're going to fail at that, but the goal is to continue to get, get up. Always get up, always keep moving forward. And we have that safe space and that support for people to do that. It's so important. That you can get up with somebody pulling you up instead of on your own accord. You know, it's so nice that that. have and achieve, you know, we have 20 people to put out their hands and say, I'm here, you know? Yeah. That that to me is, is incredible. One of the things I tell people I tell therapists a lot is, is if you're a healer, if you're a therapist, if you're whoever, right. In the healing arts that your clients will only heal to the level at which you've healed, meaning the level at which your boundaries and your barriers have been washed away, Mm -hmm. have been cleaned up, have been cleared. That's to the level at which your patients can heal. That's to the level at which if you're a business owner, your businesses can heal, right? If you're a business coach, (laughs) because 
right it's all you know it's like it's just healing right it's it's like you know it's not putting band-aids on pnls <laughs> it's it's healing the pnl it's making the pnl better so it doesn't right. need band-aids anymore so you know we we look at at life a little bit differently i think you and i than than most we're looking at it from this holistic point of view and for the audience who's listening give us some of your perspective on resilience mm -hmm. in business in life in general and i guess resilience with a map resilience with a plan because resilience is awesome to have but if you don't have a plan you're spinning your wheels there's no amount of resilience that that's gonna stop you from you know like getting exhausted and yeah. then falling on your butt on the hamster wheel right so yeah. let's talk about resilience but also making a plan that makes that resilience worthwhile well, and the first thing that you said um, that's so important is in, in, that, in that aspect is having a plan, okay? Having a plan and knowing where you want to go, okay? What's your purpose? You got to be able to ask answer that question. What's your purpose? What's your why? Why are you doing what the hell you, that you want to do, okay? What's your purpose for doing that? And where do you want to go with it? I see a lot of people... Uh, in business, they don't have that. They don't have that dialed in. They don't know where they're going, okay? Mm -hmm. And so then they get dragged all over the place and they get dragged into all these different things. And so first of all, having a plan. And here's what I was telling a guy, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday that's so important about having a plan. Your plan is not going to be perfect. How many people have you met already that say, well, as soon as this, as soon as this plan is perfect, then I'm going to launch that's not what that's not the purpose of a plan. A plan is just to get you a plan is to get you out of the starting blocks. OK, that's uh -huh. what Jeff Olson talks about in his book, The Slight Edge. A plan is never going to fucking be perfect. OK, get that out of your head. It's just to get you off the damn starting block, because 10 yards down the road, it's going to change. Something's going to cause it to change. OK. Something in the plan is not going to work. You're going to have to course correct and you're going to have to pivot. And so part of the, some of the things you heard me, we was talking earlier before we started the podcast about one of the series that I've been working on that I've been, uh, was the, um, you know, the habits, thoughts and actions that cultivate success. Right. Right. And so a couple of those things fit into this resilience that you talked about. Okay. And so I'll give you a couple of them. First of all, one of the ones that we talk about is you got to have a can-do attitude, right? I can do this. Have a can-do attitude. That builds that, that, that resilience, right? Embrace change. Embrace change. And be, be open to change because when you're open to change, then you it's easier for you to course correct, okay? And also when you're open to change, it leads into that other one of be okay, being uncomfortable. That's, that's mine too, because when you're uncomfortable, then you're in growth mode, right? <laughs> I don't remember a day in my life that I've ever actually been comfortable. So right. I think I'm just in constant growth mode, but, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get the people who say, I want to be comfortable. Me either. Yeah. Because when you're, because I, I don't, I, I get why they say it, but I don't think they understand what they're saying when they say that. Okay. It's not about being comfortable. It's about being the best you. It doesn't always feel comfortable. Right. I think it's that, but I think it's being, I think what people are wanting when they say comfortability mm -hmm. is they're inside yeah. of the uncomfortability they're they're wanting yeah. the the mental state of being that eye of the storm that wizard right yeah so but that's okay. a totally different thing than yeah. than the comp than the comfortability comfortability so 
that's what I think people are, are trying for is peace right. within it. Like I love when chaos is happening around me and I'm still calm. Yeah. That's like, that's the ultimate for me. Right. Place where I know I've arrived at another level. Right. Yes. Because I right. can calm inside of the storm. Right. Yeah. Right. I love that. And then the other key that's so important to uh, building that resilience and having that plan um, and I mentioned this earlier, is to surround yourself with ass kickers, man. Okay? I can't say that enough. Surround yourself with people who are growing, who are doing, who are creating success. Because su success begets success. Right? Yeah. And you know that, and I know that. Uh, but that's so important. And when you have that, when you, when you start to put those things together, that's where you build that resilience. Because one of the things that you said earlier that's so important is there's a lot of times that we can get up on our own, but there's sometimes we get hit so fucking hard that we need help getting up off the damn canvas. Yep. And that's where you have those ass kickers around you that, that can pull, help pull you up off the canvas. Because the most important thing is to always get the fuck back up. <laughs> right. Right? And, and, I, and I just want to, because we kind of mentioned it a little bit ago with the, the Tibetans. Uh, the other part of that is not trying to fix the person who's down, right? No, it's not about fixing it's, them. Okay. It, yeah. We pull them up, but we pull them up by being okay and being comfortable in their uncomfortability. And that's kind right. of the point I was making with, with the therapist and the level of healing is so many therapists get so uncomfortable with their patient's pain that the patient will never heal because the therapist is so uncomfortable. Yeah, right? that's not good. Yeah, and as so, a therapist, that's not good, yeah. And so that's the same thing with, like, let's say you're, you're a speaker coach and you're comfortable with, with everything, right? But let's say you had an experience of trauma and then you had a speaker student who was triggering that trauma yeah. specifically over and over again, every single time they got up to speak in front of you, right? When you yeah. were teaching them. Yeah. What do you do? You got to work through the trauma first. Right. You have to. You got you, 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 you to only, get to a point where you can be the person you need to be for your clients. You got to work through some shit, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. Because, uh, because of what you're talking about, that translates and people pick up on that. And you're, you're doing your clients a disservice if you're still in it. We all have things, okay? But we have to work through those things, okay? To, 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 in order to be better for ourselves so that we can be better for our clients and the people that we're supposed to serve and the people that we, that we live with and that we love, okay? And so the goal is not to hang on to the trauma, but to find out what do I need to do to move forward? And how can I use this to help pro pro propel me forward, sort of thing? The lesson in this is a, is a good question to ask. What, it's a good question to ask yourself like every day. Yes, <laughs> what's, what's the lesson in this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Totally agree. So, you know, I know we kind of jump around a little bit on my show because this is all about creating a new tomorrow today. And and yeah. that's not a linear conversation, but the fact that you and I are both solution oriented people, I want to kind of give, and I always do this on the end of, of every show is three tips, tricks, skills, things that people can take away immediately to create their new tomorrow today and activate their vision for a better world. So this time I want three from you as mm -hmm. JB the speaking coach. And then I want right. three from you as JB, the achieve systems leader who has something to say to the people in our industry, you know, about business. So. All right. Okay. Well, it's very interesting, but um, they're, they're probably the same. <laughs> and here's what I mean by that. It goes back to exactly a, a couple of things that I've already said. First of all, 
You need to know your why in everything that you do in life. Why the hell are you doing it? Okay? So you need to understand that, whether it be business, relationships, finances. It doesn't matter. What is your why? And you need to understand that. And here's what I, or here's what I tell people all the time, and I learned this from one of my mentors. Your why, there needs to be an emotional connection to your why of what you do, okay? That is so strong that no matter what happens, it's not going to knock you off course. So that's the first thing. Understand and know your why and be connected to your why. That's the first thing. The second thing is understand the importance of taking steps each day. Understand the, the understand what success looks like. And then uh, one of my favorite books is The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. He talks about this. People think success is this quantum leap. It's not. It's consistent, uh, doing the right actions consistently over time, okay? Yeah. That's what success really is. We just, we just, we look at somebody and we look at their success and we think it happened overnight. We don't see the 10,000 hours that Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell talks about in the outliers that they put in. Right. We don't see that, Yeah. okay? But if you truly want to be successful, do those right actions consistently over time. And here's the thing that I tell people. Allow time the opportunity to do its work because the time is the catalyst. Yeah. But a lot of times we give up and we say, well, this ain't working. It takes time. And some things take more time than others. We need to give it time. If you're doing the consistent actions over time, 12 months from now, 20 mu 24 months from now, and I relate it to, let's just, let's just take it back to health, all right? Think about this. If you have a goal to lose weight, to get in shape, and you're doing that, you're doing the, the exercises and the, the workouts, three months from now, if you continue to do that, you're going to see a little change. You can't, 12 months you from now, 13 months from now, 24 months from now, how much of a change are you going to see if you can cons consistently do that action? You mean I can't go to the gym for five hours today and then not, not go back and have a six pack abs in a month? No. No? Oh my goodness. No. And, and, and that's here, the thing. And, and here I was <laughs> doing it all wrong. <laughs> right. But see, that's what people think. They, they, you see people with abs and you think, oh, man, that's awesome. Man, they put a lot of work into that shit, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so it's consistent actions over time. What are the consistent actions over time that you need to do to create the success in your, in your business, in your relationships, in your finances, yeah. okay? And it's not just quantum leap. So those are the key things that I, that I tell people uh, in business and speaking, know your why, uh, understand the consistent actions that you need to do over time and be consistent doing those things. Yeah. Okay. And so those are key things. Yeah. From that perspective, I, I have a quick story. I have a, I have a patient that uh, is in Pennsylvania <clears throat> that I've been working with. I'm in Florida. How do you work with a, a stroke victim uh, after, you know, from online. Right. But uh I, I've been training him because the nursing home he's in, is, frankly, should be shut down and reconfigured. They have no idea what they're doing in there. Uh, they basically have told him that if he comes in, that he probably will never leave. And he's 52 years old, had a stroke, not like an invalid. You know, he's not an elderly person who's not going to be capable, but he's from the Bronx and he's a, a, a PR guy who's, basically toured with rock bands his whole life as uh, as a, you know, the stage crew, basically he runs the whole production for rock bands. 
And, uh, and so you got to get the personality of a guy from Brooklyn. Who's kind of like that, right? They right. don't have a slowdown button. They don't have a, 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 a can't do button. They have uh, I'm going to go until I break myself button. And um, so I've been telling him slow and steady wins the race over and over and over again, slow and steady, slow and steady, build the foundation first, slow and steady. So it's almost been a year at the end, at the uh, end of April, beginning of May will we'll have been a year that he's be in this nursing home where they told right. him he'll be for the rest of his life. And I get messages every single day, just about nowadays with, I just stood up in the shower and ho without holding myself up for the first time. And I didn't need to sit in my wheelchair anymore. And like, I'm going to get out of this place. And I walked up a, 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 a grassy hill that was uneven. And, you know, it's like, he's doing all this progress at first. It was no progress at all that he could yeah. see that he could right. see no progress at all. No progress at all. No pro months and months of I don't see any progress. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Because once you get that foundation, which is the hardest thing to build. Yes. The kitchen's easy. The bathroom is easy. The beautiful fixtures are easy once you have the foundation. But if you don't right. have the foundation, you'll never have the beautiful structure above right exactly yeah so, i love that so this is what i tell him it sounds like this is kind of the similar thing to what you're saying is, is yeah is slow and steady be yeah. patient take your time build your foundation strong and know your why so what's your why exactly what's your are why? you asking me that question um, my why yeah what's your why i love it i love it my why ah my why is to fulfill my destiny, okay? My destiny and my calling, I know this. I, I learned it a long time ago when I was a teenager. My, my, my why is to empower and inspire people to be their best. I'm called to speak into other people's lives, to be there for other people, okay? And you know what? You know what that does for me, Ari? In order for me to be there for other people, I got to be at my best, which means I got to continue growing. Okay, I got to continue being better because I'm no good to anyone else if I'm if I'm if I'm not at my best. Okay, and so my and my best continues to grow. That changes, right? And so, but my why, my true why, is to create success in other people's lives. And I do that by creating success in my life because I want people to understand that it's their obligation and it's their duty to create success. Because here's the thing that people miss. Here's the thing that people miss and I learned a long time ago. There are people that you haven't even met yet that you're supposed to serve. There are people that you don't even know yet that they are supposed to learn from you and your life lessons, okay? And so that's my why, is to make people, make sure people are tapping into their greatness and their, to, to be extraordinary so that they can make the world an extraordinary place, their world an extraordinary place. That's awesome. How can people get a hold of you, JB, if they want to get a hold of you? And how can they get a hold of Achieve if they're interested in uh, becoming a part of our family? Oh, good stuff. Well, you can reach out to me at uh, JB at Beyond the Field Coaching. Uh, you can go to my website, beyondthefieldcoaching.com. Um, th those are a uh, place you can reach out to me. Uh, as far as reaching out to Achieve and learning more about that, you can go to our Achieve website, which is achieve.com. I think that's right. Isn't that right? Achieve.com. I think it's Achieve um, Systems. Achieve Systems.com. I knew that it didn't sound right. Achieve Systems.com. That's how you can find out more about Achieve. Uh, but you can co also contact me and I can connect you with uh, the right people and achieve as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on. This has been another episode of Create a New Tomorrow. I've had a great time talking to JB Braden. 
He is a friend and colleague and absolutely amazing uh, speaking coach, trainer, business person, but really just a friend, a mentor, and a good person to know. He's got a lot of connections. So if you uh, are needing anything, you know, feel free to get a hold of him. And you could connect with me as well if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Achieve Systems. But uh, here is to creating a new tomorrow today, activating our vision for a better world. Let's all go out, stop the bullies, stop the silence, speak our truth into people so that they too can get inspired. I know for me, my why is I have to do this stuff. I don't have really a choice. It's part of the calling that I'm built for. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm called as my why, why do I do this? To wake people up to the realization that we made all this shit up and we can do better. And so let's do better to look together, collaborate for success. Thank you so much for being here and we'll talk to you next time. Listening to this podcast, I appreciate all you do to create a new tomorrow for yourself and those around you. If you'd like to take this information further and are interested in joining a community of like-minded people who are all passionate about activating their vision for a better world, go to the website, createanewtomorrow.com and find out how you can be part of making a bigger difference. I have a gift for you just for checking it out and look forward to seeing you take the leap and joining our private paid mastermind community. Until then, see you on the next episode.